Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Lee Jensen, and this is the INE Network broadcast. Uh, we're beginning our seventh season. Uh, we did our 30th anniversary show last week, and perhaps you got in on that. That was a rather special, eventful time in the history of the company and the history of our, our circle of talent. And uh, welcome to all of you tonight. Appreciate your participation. Got a full house again. And I don't think, I don't know if you've noticed, but I sure have. Every show we've done is as full as it can possibly get. And that should only grow with this new tool. I'm so thrilled to be able to interact with you guys more on a really unusual basis. We've been doing webinars for six years. Every week for six years, have a show of some kind to try and tie everybody together and help teach people how to turn a hobby into a great business. And then Google Plus shows up. <laughs> and I am never going to forget June uh, 2013. What, a, what an awesome time to be playing around with everything. And then I've been publishing my book and getting that all ready. It looks like the publishing is of the actual paper copies is going to happen this week. So next week we'll start to get the, the books out and uh, get everything rocking and ready to roll. So the timing is rather, rather exciting. Uh, Tam Marie's with us tonight. She's the owner and president of Profitable Hobbies now. Tam, can you drop in and say hello to everybody? Hello, good evening, and, and how is it? I think everybody's fine. <laughs> Welcome to all of you, and thank you for your contribution and your participation tonight. I want to start out with uh, my slide series that I've prepared. I do this short format with the PowerPoint and have been doing this for a long time. So let's just get on with that and then we can talk a little bit later as we get this part worked out, okay? Alrighty, I think we're ready to roll here. Mel, somebody give me a heads up. You should have Success Mountain on your on your screen, okay? Good. Yeah, it looks good. Mm -hmm. good. All right, we're ready to roll. Let's go. We've looked for a long time. Uh, Tammy and I have looked for a long time a way and a concept to express what Tammy came up with quite a while ago is called traveling in good company. We felt like for a long time the most unique part of this, whatever it is we're building, was our ability to interact with such great, like-minded, creative people. <coughs> Excuse me. And you guys are all all that way, and it just is so unique, and has been such an important contributing part of our of our success. <coughs> but we were always looking for some way to describe it. And our valley is surrounded here, Utah Valley is surrounded by seven majestic big mountains, 11,000 feet up from the valley floor, which is really amazing uh, neighborhood. Uh, the Indians, this was sacred turf for them, sacred territory, and seven anything was sacred to the Indian cultures. And so the mountains around this valley really are kind of like a fortress. They are just incredible to live here with. And so success of climbing uphill is just profound. You can't put uh, success into images and not have most of them be climbing some kind of mountain, going uphill, first of all. But second of all, the summit, getting to where you're trying to get to. And then developing the inspiration in the INE network uh, as a name around the idea of success as a mountain has really been something that I've concentrated on and zeroed in on, and now I'm hoping we can actually make it mean something at some point. And I think it's a great way to kind of connect all of us. I put a lot of thought into tonight's show because this is the first one of now the seventh season. And I can go back and now fix things on the front end of each show 
and they'll let me pick my picture that will be shown across uh, YouTube, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> it's no longer a random choice. We've made enough of an impression. You think about having full shows for a whole summer long. We have had phenomenal response of watching an hour-long program, and I know Google likes that kind of a function in the process of their what they're going after, what they're their business. And as I was on uh, on Google Plus and going through my stream the first part of last week, a kid came up and he asked a question and posted it as he's planning to put two hours. Uh, every chance he gets, he says, I'm guessing I'm going to be able to put about 10 hours a week into my Google Plus social media account. Do you think that's enough to make things work? And I kind of chuckled. And I thought, oh, only a youngster would, would ask a question like that and not realize what you're really, what you're really facing when you're at the bottom of the mountain and what it'll take to get to the top of one of these majestic peaks around here is no small effort. How can it be? I don't know of anything worthwhile that doesn't require a great deal from all of us. And so I thought, well, that's a pretty good place to begin because I got a couple of special points that I think I can make as we get into this particular show. So I hope we'll make it worthwhile to you something that you can enjoy and chew on, but I'm really hoping you'll get something out of it. The takeaway from spending time like this should come from every show, something that really lifts your spirits and helps you continue that struggle of your own uphill climb. I just knocked my ears off, and thus my microphone. Are you still there, Tamarine? Yeah, yeah she's still here. Now, as I start each show, I've gradually evolved to where I try and put the news of the network into this whole thing, and uh, I really have enjoyed this part of our function together because you guys are, are contributing so much to what we're doing. And when I filmed the first show and posted it on Our Journey TV, uh, I titled this carved eggshell Shared Vision. And I go through the entire carving and engraving process of this particular piece in that show. And to me, when I stumbled onto that calligraphic Chinese lettering, and it was called Shared Vision, I just went, oh, bingo. That's just exactly what we're doing. Because we're doing this together. This isn't any one person's doing. This is all of us. And our contribution and our sharing with each other has just been absolutely amazing, something really wonderful. And then I don't know if you noticed on the stream today, today is Harvest Moon. And it said tonight, please share this experience. And I shot this picture last night. The moon was so big and bright, it was just amazing. And I noticed it just before I went in the house and went to bed. And I picked my camera up and clicked that thing off and went, all but going into the clouds. I didn't quite pay any attention till I discovered the harvest moon is tonight, guys. And this is harvest time. And this is really such a neat, neat time in the history of the, of the calendar year. And last week we announced three of our newest masters. And one of the one of the most enjoyable things in this whole circumstance for Tammy and I is to acknowledge someone who has contributed so much. And Nick and Joni and Mel, uh, there's just no way to really honor you as aggressively as we would really like. It's about the only way we know, but you surely do deserve your contribution. And uh, I'm sending you each a plaque like this to hang on your wall. <laughs> And so, uh, I don't know if the whole world pays much attention to it, but boy, we sure do in our group. And uh, our, world, our world does. What? Our world does. Well, I, it does. It really does. Tammy just said our world does. I want to read the the portion of it that I've contributed to everyone who we've already elected the master. And. Uh, 
see if you don't think this fits in Joni and Mel and and uh, Nick's Nick's position. Out of our long history, there has been a few extraordinary individuals who have climbed their own mountains of success and excelled with their own talent well beyond the ordinary. It has been my goal during our entire history to note and encourage this specialized contribution to a concept that I started in 1983. You are now elected into this amazing master circle of very creative talent, but the major contribution that I have also noticed and I always try to acknowledge is the people who are willing to help someone else get started on their own climb. Our motto in the INE network is they rise highest to lift as they go and that concept has influenced this decision as well as the quality of your work. You are one such rare person and we take we are taking on both the quality of the art but also they are our marketplace and that is no small task. You three deserve the best recognition I know how to give. I cannot think, thank you enough for your contribution to something I hope will outlast our, all of our lives. I look forward to what we might build yet together because this is really just the opening of a new door. So congratulations to you three especially and to all the other masters in our network who have uh, kind of led the way. Uh, in the early days there wasn't much here and I talked to Keith this week and we visited for quite a while about how our beginnings were so soft and so uh, there just wasn't, it was hard to keep the rock in the air just to the begin with and when I see others who come in and are contributing so much it just freaking thrills me clear to death. I wanted to announce the news from Lance. Uh, Lance Larson has, has uh, really digging in here now, guys. It's very impressive to watch what you're doing, Lance. You're really coming along well. And we do notice. We do notice. And I pulled off of Google. No, this was, uh, yeah, the regular Google site. I pulled up Lance Larson, and these two posts were on there. So Lance's profile is there as well as what he has posted under Lance Larson's name. And the more you do it, Lance, the more you're going to show up. And I don't know if you've all dawned on you yet what's really even happened here, but boy, I sure do. It takes sometimes years to get this kind of exposure and position in the marketplace. And Google is allowing us to be able to penetrate so much easier than ever before. And we allow the computer to go find our customers for us. And I'm just thinking this is just all but magic. It is so powerful when it comes to trying to build a name and reputation. And yeah, we're just playing with it for now. But I, it's working, gang. It is really starting to make a little dent. And the more we learn to use it, the better we're going to get. I wanted to thank you, Lance. Uh, Lance sent a surprise package up here, and uh, Tammy just rolled it out and showed me what has come in through the door. But Lance has carved uh, a gun stock where all the major, isn't this the Grand Slam? Uh, the five different animals, and they're on all. Call the ahead. big five. Go ahead and explain it, Lance, more. That uh, that's a carving of the what they call the uh, uh, big five, the five most dangerous animals in the world huh, in Africa. It's got the Cape buffalo, elephant, lion, rhino, and uh, also uh, leopard. And oh, I just wow. uh, put every one on it, just because I got so much interest in African animals, and they're they're just fun to carve. <laughs> Are you are you getting comfortable with your carving, Lance? You, it looks like you are. Well, I sure enjoy it. I hope I'm now, getting comfortable. It's now fun, isn't it? Yes, it's it is. Now fun. Yeah, to, to begin with, maybe not so much, you know. And it's frustrating at first. It's frustrating work to begin with because it just doesn't happen easily. But as you get all going, uh, I I don't know how. To begin with, we're pretty cautious about talking about people, about how, how much more you can do, how much better the work can actually become. And 
too many of us when we're amateurs we don't know anything we don't know up from down but as you start getting better at it then you start seeing more and I would dare guess Lance you're not gonna ever quit doing this now not ever. Oh, no. You, oh, no. you're far enough long now that you're really hooked and what a fun thing what a fun thing in Arizona the State Fair of Arizona thinks you're pretty good too don't they yeah, that was a couple of years ago, and I'm I'm just putting another stock in this year, and I'm it's not I'm not trying to brag, but it just seems like I'm I'm lucking out a little bit on the on getting the ribbons on the on the gun stock division. That's because probably Jose isn't in it anymore. <laughs> well, it's actually, might have a little bit of truth to that, because his went about the same kind of reaction. His happened about the same way. So what a what a nifty piece, Lance. This is just absolutely amazing, and nothing thrills us more. I mean, we've watched people succeed in our circle who start the same place, the same way. They get started up the mountain, and then all of a sudden something happens. They get critiqued, or someone slam dunks them somehow, or someone overlooks them somehow. Heaven forbid it's me that says the wrong thing, but they quit, and it just startles me because I you don't realize how far they've come I guess but it does require mastery requires a lot it is, it is not easy to scale the kind of mountain that we're going after but you're well on your way Mr. Larson thank, thank you thank you thank you very much for shipping this up for us to examine this is just magnificent piece thank you thank you thank you uh, you need to turn your mic on if you're going to comment, Tamari. Okay. Sorry. Um, I think uh, Master Jose Valencia recognizes that effort and all and has been helpful too. I think you're right. I think yeah. Jose has contributed a great deal too. Okay. Uh, you need to turn your mic off now again, Tam. We're getting a double echo here. Okay, now we're ready to roll. Uh, I have to apologize for a second here because I was going to stop the show and pull out Jose's magazine article and show everybody. Uh, you got that. Maybe we can do that in a minute when I come back on live. We'll do that and show you. Jose sent me uh, my copy and autographed the cover and there's no good way to thank thank this kid for how much he's done. Uh, Jose has lifted every bar. He has overturned every stone. I have never had such a good student who just wanted so badly to quit his electronic career and get over to where he could do something that he could control his own time more. And I get people who say, well, I'm better than Jose, and I just, boy, nothing boils my blood quicker because you have no idea what work he's put into the picture as a whole. And I keep trying to tell everybody that artistry is not how damn good you are. It just is not that. Art is for what it does for you as a person. And if your art is opening up the doors for your own life and everyone around you, then, oh, heaven's sakes, have at it. I don't care what that art is. Writing, painting, songwriting, anything that you turn into an art is a dedicated way. It isn't a thing, it's a way, okay? Uh, I wanted to share with you tonight, because I'm so determined that you begin to make a decent reward for your effort and especially for your risk. I had quite a meeting with my son today. They've got so much new business <coughs> excuse me, coming through the door they almost don't know what to even do with it. And they're ex doing extremely well for such young kids in, in their business career and yet there's a threat that happens if you grow too fast it's actually easier to kill a business with too much growth than it is not enough and so we had a rather in unusual 
<laughs> visit today. And I would already put this in the show for you guys because I want to start talking about this now, okay? And so I was sharing this same council with, with Lance today, and, and then here it is. I get to share it with you now. I was riding around on Woody Searle's ranch. He owned 12,000 acres on the top of Diamond Mountain in eastern Utah. Just an elegant, elegant place to go play. And uh, as we were cruising around one day, I was complaining about never quite having enough money. <laughs> and I kept saying, how much do you have to make so you have enough, Woody? And Woody just, finally, he says, son, you got this whole thing wrong. He says, the second you can outproduce more than you consume, you're done. You don't have to worry about money anymore. So becoming the producer in the marketplace and the economy is a really, really valuable thing. If all you've done your whole life long is depend on a paycheck, you've not even gotten close to being a producer. The producer makes something and sells it in the economy. And I've talked about it and talked about it. It's all the way through the Opportunity Intersection Business Plan. There's a 3% club. Three people out of 100 are producers and trade with full risk in the economy. And 97 go out and say, well, I'll help you do your producing and your trading, but I don't want to take the risk, so I get a paycheck every Friday. And that Friday paycheck is not as good as most people would like it to be, but based on all the balance, because unlike the government, a business has to literally pay the bills and keep the damn rock in the air. And most don't wrestle with that, but a business owner has to. And you're now going to start from the very best perspective, from a hobby. It's as least risk and as least money as you can get into the marketplace. But you're going to have to risk time and effort and involvement in every other way. Shoestring it. This takes more time and more effort, a little less risk, but you still got to make the investment. There is no way to climb into the production side of a business and not take some degree of risk. And so as I share that advice with everybody from here on out now, you need to hang this on the wall of your life or in your studio somewhere. You just cannot get there unless you produce and trade more than you consume. And so my series of shows this year are going to be aimed at exactly that. From very simple beginnings, this is my, there was no company here. This was, I was just carving eggshells and playing with it. I had no idea what I'd even stumbled onto yet. But the second the American Craft Council said I was at least in the top 800 craft artists in the United States, that got my attention. And I began to try and nudge it a little further and nudge it a little further and nudge it a little further. And so every move you make, like Lance's ribbon on his stocks, he's willing to risk his work in the state fair and see what happens. And that's a tough moment. It's a very subjective decision by people who sometimes like what's on a carved gun stock and sometimes don't. you got to believe that. Nowadays, that's getting to be a really serious issue. Except for those of us that like carving in those stocks and carving these kinds of concepts, we love it. We absolutely enjoy it to no end. And to be able to mix with all of you guys on the same basis with a tool now that allows those of us who really do want to succeed to help each other. If you haven't registered on my communities, please do. There's now four posted and I got several more coming at you of concepts that I'm testing in the marketplace to see the viability. I'm trying to see how can we use the Dreamers Toolbox. I'm convinced that people who have a grand dream going are the ones that succeed. You start a grand dream and then you cultivate it, you incubate it, you take care of it, you foster it, you share it, and you go past whatever anyone else condemns you for and keep growing and going. And if we can help each other grow and continue to go, we're going to do well. 
I got to have you guys share this with everyone around you. Don't just sit down in these shows and say, God, that was a great hour for me. We've got to invite other people to come and see what's going on here. And that will then in turn help us grow as well. Because I'm going to help each of you do the same kind of thing. Okay? And I, I have a lot of people over the years, they start saying or thinking to themselves, all i got to do is get closer to Lou Jensen and then I'll succeed. And I, I maybe read that wrong on occasion, but I can usually sense what's going on. And I, please don't look at that, your mastery that way. This isn't about me or Tam. This is about you. It's your perspective. It's what you're doing. It's your dream. It's your hope, and it's your way of going at it. I guarantee you we will notice. There's, there's no way you can participate more and more and not have us pay attention to that. But that isn't what will turn your life into the mastery of something unique. You really do have to line your life up with the idea that I've got to go a path that I've probably not gone before. i got to make some decisions and some choices that I maybe have never made in my entire lifetime. None of us are kids, and from here on till we check out, none of us know how much longer we have left. I had yesterday easily the best day of my life. I Oh, my gosh, things came together. <laughs> oh, it's the crosshairs of eternity showed up. And I just sit back and I've been wrestling with some serious problems for at least 13 years, and now... Now the end is in sight. And I can't tell you how important it is that you get a sense that you're working on something that will literally make your life, the rest of your life and living worthwhile. That's all, that's what you're after. You're trying to discover your own strengths and put them to work. That's your talent. That's why that thread of interest keeps coming back to you that, God, I love working with my hands. And I love to paint, and I love to draw, and I love to take photographs, and I love to write. I mean, isn't that coming through loud and clear? Isn't that eternity saying, hey, Lance Larson, pay attention. You've got some serious ability here. I won't ever forget when you showed up at Russ Larson's show up in uh, the Western National, what is that called? Warren the Wara Western Rodeo show in Heber with your work and you and both Jose came a long ways to participate in that and and the room where they had all the exhibited artwork Marilyn was there and Al was there and everybody Craig was there and here's Lance's stuff right alongside some really serious talent and I know you had a good time being there Lance Larson it was a little risky when you were a beginner and just getting started but you had a good time and I think you learned. I think you grew. I think it was a good, good experience. And it was so cool. <laughs> Jose's won the whole division, and he was just, I think it was even a little taken back, but just thrilled at the recognition of the fact that he's getting better. He's really getting better. And so the mastery in our circle is just a title of the beginning of the rest of your life. It's not that you've been better than anyone else on earth. It's that now you're as good as we can do to help you basically really get started with the rest of your the rest of your climb of your own mountain of success. The secret in your life really is you. And I think it's the reason you're here. There's something that you have that's boiled up inside, that's bottled up inside that you've got to somehow repackage and start sharing it. Because you touch people's lives, you influence people's lives in ways that you right now couldn't possibly even understand. <coughs> oh, excuse me. i got to get rid of my cough, guys. I'm sorry. But as you start sensing this in your own life and begin to realize that what you're after is something that actually might work for you. We've been Paragraph, Paragraphics, Profitable Hobbies, and the I&E Network for uh, 30 years now. 
and it is a bit of a circus, but the three rings is my story and our story and now your story. Allowing us to involve you in what we're doing is, is a sacred task. It's something that I not only value, that I try and handle as carefully as I can so that we don't not help you grow. Have it be something that really genuinely supports your own life and makes things work out. So, can you just give it a few hours a week and <laughs> expect it to succeed? Keith and I talked about the most valuable thing he ever came up with was learning. In spite of his full-time job, he managed to give his art career two hours a day on and beyond a regular job job. And I don't know how you can do it any other way. You, If you're not investing heavily in what you're trying to do, it's just not going to respond. It'll stay a hobby, it'll be a fun thing, but it'll never turn into a business without a really determined plan and then the doing of that plan. I just don't think it happens any other way. And I, isn't it really quite practical that social media is now going to become the tool for our exposure? An artist can be extremely good with their skills, and if no one ever sees them, if no one ever crosses their path, they just fade off into the dark and die, and no one ever knows they're there until someone comes along and promotes them. And that's how everything is made. Somebody comes along after you died and make a ton of money off of your work when you never could ever figure. Um, Van Gogh never sold anything in his life. His value has come ever since. And I think, how unfortunate, how sad. When you love doing what you're doing, if you could make a living doing it, wouldn't you then do even more? And it's from ignoring the marketplace. It's from never understanding how to trade and how to trade yourself with the marketplace. When has anything you've ever done been easy or simple? Anything worthwhile? You can't just barely hit it. And so the starting effort that I'm going to make in this first show of this now seventh season is for you to realize what you're really taking on. I don't think it hurts to know that it's uphill. I don't think it hurts to know that it's going to require a lot. It's like everything else you've done that's worthy and satisfying in your life. You've invested everything you know how to invest or it didn't come around. But I know that a lot of people start and really literally head in the wrong way. They, they don't understand the right reasons and then they don't know why they're doing or what they're going after. And they know that, that it ought to be important to them, but coming up with a dream, how in the hell do you do that? I think you're literally inspired from outside yourself. That all eternity says, you know what, Dean? You know what, Mel? You know what, Tam, you could literally do more with your life than perhaps you suspect. And these little whispers, these little thoughts, these little moments of encouragement, these threads of interest, they're the value. They will help you look inside yourself and figure out, okay, now what should I do with me? And then what are the next moves that I should make, okay? If you don't see the potential in yourself, you won't ever take in on anything challenging. You just won't. You've got to have a feeling for what you're messing with and what you're going after, and then you begin to sense there's some value for that whole heavy contribution thing. But if you don't do it, who's going to? No one can come along and do this for another person, okay? And if you can somewhat sense what you're after and what you really, the relationship you have with your life and with other people, and this contributing force in your life from the talent that you do have, can you imagine what might happen? I think it's really an amazing process. And as we share it and try and encourage each other, to do this and get more out of our own doing and our own futures, I think we're really going to be a force someday 
to rearrange the starving artist and make it so that an artist can actually make a living a little sooner? Wouldn't that be a freaking miracle? And if you keep getting caught in the thick of thin things and you let those thin things, the silliness of life and the busyness of life and the, the noisy things of life draw you away from what you really ought to be concentrating on, who's going to fix that? I know what Woody Searle would tell you. I know what Jack Solomon would tell you. Because <laughs> I've heard those words for 35 years. And it is not where success is found, ever. And if you can just pull away from anything we do here together, something that you can see that this week you can take on and you can do better, or daily you see something that comes into the factor that will help you literally climb your own mountains on a more predictable basis. Uh, there was there's such neat thoughts on the stream of Google Plus, great quotes and great concepts, and some will hit you a little harder than others. And if you don't use your Snagit software and grab those and put them over into your file, and then realize what's happening every day is something on Google Plus is nudging you. It's a signal. These are creative, thoughtful things that are put up. And at least half of them are something to do with success. Are they not? And I'm not just trying to master Google+. Plus. We're not just trying to master social media, for crying out loud. What we're trying to do is master some product, something we can produce and then trade in the marketplace. And you start at the bottom of the hill. And you know what? That's okay. It's okay to start at the beginning. And when you see something like this on Google+, Plus, if you don't snag it and put it over in your life, then it is not going to hit you again, ever, and it won't rub off. This is electronic uh, journaling like I've been doing for 40 years of my own life. When I see something that I like in a magazine or whatever, I'd take it, tear it, copy it, something, throw it in my journal because it was a sentiment and a thought that I really cared about. And over a period of time, that then begins to help you. It rubs off. You begin to say, ooh, I like that direction. And the fact that your soul doesn't know the way, and then all of a sudden I see something done like this. What a great layout. What a, I like the font. I like the layout. I like the picture. I like the concept. <coughs> and that then begins to influence me on the choices and decisions of what I'm going to produce. What a great, great thing, okay? The one thing about life I can promise everybody listening tonight is in the next 10 years, your life will burn up <coughs> maybe even a little faster than you want. And the demands around you from everyone around you in real time <coughs> are going to make it really difficult for you to manage. And so trying to do something beyond those demands, to climb the mountain anyway, no matter your circumstances, if you lose your eyesight, then what? If you can't do like you used to be able to do, then what? If your health gives you so much fits that you just suffer almost all the time, then what? <coughs> and it requires getting above and beyond and overcoming every one of those things to succeed. Uh, the three of us have shared easily the most precious years of our life in trying to get something started here. And there has been lots of occasions when we could have quit. <coughs> There's been quite a few occasions where I have quit. And this woman sitting over here has helped me keep going. And this man in this image has inspired both of us for all this time. And that association is what lit this fire. I have no idea <coughs> where it will eventually go. 
But I do know that we've come a long ways in 30 years. As we look over those who've succeeded and gone down the road with us, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, everybody. The idea of individuals contributing what they did and who they are, they've gone on and done their own thing, every one of them, and that's what we wanted. I respect that as much as anything I've ever bumped into as people who begin to realize they're actually quite good at what they do. And then they learn how to share it. And I don't know how you can do it any better than that. <coughs> Tammy brought me a drink. Bless her heart. Saved my life. I got to learn how I can shut this off quickly and ease up on that. I know it's really distressing to Listen to me cough. I'm going to an author's webinar tomorrow. And I'm really impressed with what Judith has to say and how she puts things up. I would encourage all of you to put Judith Bryles into your Google Plus account and start make a friend out of her and then start following her. Because I think she's got a lot to contribute. And if you can imagine carving out just enough consistent time to succeed, the author begins to become successful the moment they decide to be. This is it, guys. This is, I see that and I go, oh, yeah. Yes, isn't that it? Tammy's got her hands in the air. We both are. Oh, shoot. Guys, it's a decision. And once you begin to say, if you quit worrying about someone's critique of whether you can write or not, that's BS. Just do it anyway. Do it anyway. I don't. You find a mistake in opportunity intersection, go ahead and find a mistake. And if you think that's the most important part of this whole thing, you're missing the sum total. You can't get anywhere if you don't start. And all that takes is this dedicated decision a very dedicated decision of which way you're going to go for the rest of your life. And is not opportunity and intersection dead on? I, I just, I'm so thrilled and you're just seeing these signs all over the web. <laughs> Even, add, i got to add social media to my label now too because it's definitely a part of what we're doing and there's no question it's the number one road in the country, in the world, and it's the road less traveled for sure. But it's off the fast lane, guys. It's okay to not compete with everybody and their dog anymore. We're in a different category. Get off the fast lane, come play with us. You'll really be glad you did. If Albert Einstein said, never give up on what you really want to do, the person with the big dream is more powerful than one with all the facts. <laughs> Is that not also dead on the money? The big dreamers are the ones that ultimately do change their lives and then usually affect others. And I just, my whole book is all about getting the dream going, guys. I don't know how you can sit down with me in all that course and not come out of it with a fire burning. You just, I don't think you can do that. When I'm conversing with some of you, I uh, had a conversation this week and it was very easy for me to, to determine that they really, uh, they don't dare dream. They're at a point in their life where they've been beat up enough and they've been hammered enough and uh, things haven't worked out enough that their anxiousness about at their age throwing a rock in the air again, oh, I'm just not sure. And I'm not sure you can get it going without the dream. The hope and the faith and the fact that you really actually can pull something off now in this last really precious period of your life, I don't think you can do it otherwise. Okay, And this is the place to start. Now, for the first time in your life, go to the end in mind and work backwards, like Steve Covey said. It is the way to do it. It's how the seven 
habits of highly and mostly effective people do it. They go to the end and mind work backwards, which is to dream it up and then have something to aim at. And you start playing with it from that perspective, okay? And then do something to go toward that dream every damn day, okay? Make yourself a battle plan and then go to bed thinking about what you're going to do tomorrow to enhance your personal dream. It, it works. It works. You go to sleep on the dream. Uh, I have a new address as of yesterday, and I now live in in uh, Goodnight Drive in Art City, America. <laughs> yeah. How's that for an address? Is that cool? So I'm going to have Good Morning America. I'm going to steal that from Robin Williams, and I'm going to have Goodnight Drive. <laughs> And I'm going to make something out of it. And I just sit and think, oh, crap, how oh, cool. Go to bed every night with a great thought on your mind and then wake up in the morning just raring to go because you've got something, people to see and places to go and things to do. It will change the quality of your every given day. And if you'll go through the sequence that I've plowed into this book over 10 years, I've been trying to fashion out how, how did great adventurers do it. How did they pull off something really significant? In every case, every case someone's accomplished. I just started reading one of the greatest books I've ever read. It's the story of the Transcontinental Railway and how it all came to be. And the guy that really launched the fire that made it work was called Crazy Jacob. <laughs> and everybody hated to be around him because all he ever talked about was the Transcontinental Railroad. And... Can you imagine somebody like that, that, that all they can talk about is what their dream is? <laughs> Tammy's sitting there shaking her head and laughing. Uh, had a great dream of what would happen. And then they made a map and a plan. And then they prepared and gathered for this huge adventure they were going on. And then they had an official launch. That's really a major one right there. Most people won't cross this official launch line. Because at this point, you burn the bridges, you blow up the ships, and you never go back. You are going this way the rest of your days. Now, from that point on, then what you do is you have to track it and measure it. And this is also what most people don't do. They don't bother to see where was I compared to where I'm headed and how am I doing along the way. You've got to have some kind of measurements. When Columbus headed out, to find his speed through the water, all he did was throw a bucket off the side of the boat several times a day and count how many knots. There was a knot in every foot or length of that rope. And as that boat bucket floated out behind the boat, they'd say, well, it's six knots, eight knots, ten knots, whatever. And that was his measurement for the speed, thus helping him to somewhat calculate his distance. And that is how we measure nautical speed to this day. You've got to come up with some kind of measurement of how am I doing this year compared to last? How am I doing this week compared to last? You can't tell where you're going if you can't measure it. That which you cannot measure, you cannot manage, right? And then where I think I can help maybe the most is creative problem solving. You can't accept the fact that nothing has an answer. Every problem can be solved, and it takes quite a bit of courage and faith to continue to search for a solution to your problems. And I think our fact of helping and measuring, one of the greatest contributions is Ron Snayberger sitting on here with us tonight. That old boy, he just keeps going no matter what, and all he does is help you solve problems too. Mel's the same kind of person. Joni's the same kind of person. Every master is the kind of person that has accomplished something that very few other people actually ever accomplish. And then, raising highest and sharing. I, <laughs> that's the icing on the cake. I don't know how you do it any better than that, guys. I really don't. Okay? Plan away. Do away. An art is away. Make it your quest, make it a joy, and make it a passion. And then the obsession really becomes the true therapy for your life and living. 
Uh, you can retire. You can get control of your time. You really can if you'll just make a very dedicated plan and effort to get to it. Uh, I wanted out of dentistry so bad I could taste it. I hated going to work and having to hurt people every day. I think was an okay dentist, but oh Lord, I did not like what I had to do to make a living. And I just about count on everybody in the sound of my voice tonight and whoever hears this in the future. Uh, a job job is just not a very good way to have a life. The secret is to turn the living into the life and the life into the living. And then make that your job. Make that your play. We play more than we work. And we get a little criticism for it, but by the Lordy, None of us know how much time we have left. And if you can find a mentor, someone who you trust, someone who is climbing the same mountain you're trying to climb, boy, don't let them stay in their life. Don't become a pain in the butt, but stay in their life. And I can't thank these guys enough for what they helped me find. They showed me the path of how to do that very thing. And then I got to climb with them for a number of years, which has been a tremendous blessing in my life. So I'll help you with a little secret about now. It is not the path everyone else is on. <laughs> it is the path less traveled, so really pay attention to that. And you look around you and go, oh, geez, there's nobody headed where I'm headed. Then trust that. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. You don't want to go where everyone else has gone, okay? I ran into Corinda this last week also, and uh, she was the head of my uh, chairside team and worked with this precious woman for nearly 15 years. And, and what a wonderful piece of person. Oh, my hell, she was good with people. And under that difficult circumstance of going to the dentist she just smoothed everybody's feathers and helped to manage and was just incredible and she was we were chuckling and she says doc I gotta tell you she says everybody ever sees me they always say is he still doing those damn eggshells <laughs> and you gotta know when I told everybody I was gonna quit dentistry and I'm gonna go carve eggshells there was this just massive reaction by our small town and uh, definitely the path less traveled. I took a lot of heat for a long time. And in the local circles, I'm still crazy. <laughs> I'm sure of that. But what a better way to go. What a better way to go. Uh, I'm going to suggest to you tonight in this first show of the seventh season to, depending on where you are in this equation, if you're just beginning, take easier on easier projects. Don't try and do what you saw on Lance's gun tonight for your first efforts. You're going to get discouraged. You're biting off more than you can chew. This is engraving on, this was our old van. This is the first company vehicle. We bought a bump top van to go to California and back and do shows and, and we nicknamed it Surge because it, it didn't matter how hard you hit the foot pedal. It just surged it never never took off and we engraved these patterns on both sides of the door windows up front on the van and everywhere we went people reacted it was so damn delightful and this is oh this is well done i think jimmy did this and and yet if you could take this on this is done with the drill this is not blasted i can do them either way i can blast them on or i can do them with the drill but this is done with the drill and then put it on a regular piece of glass and keep doing it till you make it look good. Start with it two inches high and then blow it up to four inches high and then pull it up here is about six inches. I have a fun story about this. What, Tam? Well, come on and tell the story. Years ago, I had a guy I sold a kit to. And um, I waited long enough for him to get it, and uh, so I called him one day just to see how he was doing, see if he needed any help or, you know, everything there okay. And uh, he started to laugh the minute he heard my voice. 
And I says, what is going on? And he said, I was, you've got to turn your mic off, Lou. I have to pull the show down in order to do it. I don't Okay, know how to do never that. mind then. Never mind. We're just getting feedback. Don't don't pull it down, honey. It's okay. Anyway, he uh, <laughs> he started to laugh, and he he had a service station garage where he repair work and everything, and uh, he got his kit and pulled it out on the floor of his garage, and he just went got a piece of of uh, old window that he had out back, and he put this pattern on the window, and he started carving it. And pretty soon, uh, this lady came in to pay for her glass, or her gas, not the glass, excuse me. Anyway, she stood there and watched him for a while, and all of a sudden, she said, Can you do that on my windows? And he said, Sure. And he says, uh, Which cars? And she says, It's that black Mercedes out on pump, pump three. And he said, Yeah, I can. It's six hundred dollars a window, and uh, when he told me that, this is his first time. He just started doing the glass, and he charged this lady six hundred dollars a window to do that pattern. I just said, "You're crazy! You just got it." And he says, "Yeah, I know, and I just paid for it too." So that reminded me of that story. I just had to share it with you. It's crazy. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry to have you shut that down. Do it again. Um, it's fine. We're doing just great. It's so fun to realize. My cough now too. There. Okay. Now we're back to normal. <laughs> Technical difficulties, guys. We're going to laugh in about four or five years how far this has come and how silly these, <laughs> these shows were, but they're genuine, guys. <laughs> and uh, we hear stories like this all the time because most of you are just shy. You're normal, great people that are anxious about their own skill and their own ability. And you've never sold much in your life. You've never traded aggressively. And it really is a bit of a challenge. If you'll send me an email and enter and request this pattern, okay? This is called Surge One. And if you'll send me a request, I'll send you this pattern. I think it's in the Might be. You should have it. Tammy says you should have it in your kit and your artwork. But if you don't have it, start here. Do a truck window. Do a car window. Give it away. Whatever. Get it done. Do a good job and then put it on somebody's vehicle and turn it loose. And I guarantee you. Uh, 600 of windows a little steep, but on a, on a Mercedes, <laughs> you know. They, That's called perceived value, guys. Perceived and I'll value, bet you Mel yeah. pattern. <laughs> if they drive up with an Escalade uh, and they get out and they say they're Dr. Jensen, then fair enough, man. 600 a window, that's what it ought to be. I think that's a good price. <laughs> okay. If you wade into something like this, this is Craig's last class, and I shot a picture of, I forget who had been doing this. I think, Mike, you were in a class with him like that. Uh, this might have been that. Who's that kid from Colorado? Ryan. 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 This might have been Ryan's, Ryan's piece. But you got to be quite a ways into this before you take on a piece of walnut and somebody's expensive gun and this degree of, of carving. And I have a lot of people who get involved with us that, that really just say, well, I've been doing artwork my whole life. I can handle it, no sweat. And I'm just going, you're going to run into a brick wall in most cases when you've not climbed the mountain from the beginning and do things that you can do that are a little more reasonable and maybe get yourself on a, on a better beginning basis. I hear people occasionally who will say, well, I'm as good at doing gourds as Denny Wainscott. My gourds are as good as Denny Wainscott, except Denny's, Denny's best piece, wasn't it 20000 Tam? 26. He's got a $26,000 piece of art out now. And they, they're saying to me or Tam 
which is probably the last two people you should go after any one of our masters. But they think there's every bit as good artist as Denny, and yet they don't realize what Denny has done. He's worked on his name and reputation, guys, and he's careful with it. And that progress that we have of promoting and, and helping each other grow here is how it works. And so be really cautious of what you take on to begin with. And then pay attention to the calendar. What time of year is it? What moon is up tonight? It's harvest time, guys. And it's coming up on Christmas time. And the second, first and second busiest retail holiday periods are coming at us like a fast freight. Halloween, the end of October, and Christmas, the end of December are big times. And you plug Thanksgiving in between there, where should be our big time? Now Shannon is working with Tam, doing the books, and she started this pattern. She wants to carve it on a plate. And I brought up one of the training plates in our, our package in our storage and showed you the Christmas plate and then the, the Ponsettia plate. And my gosh, this is just a line tracing of the pattern. But they're both really attractive. And then if you put the family name right down in here, oh, dang, this thing ends up good. And uh, some of you understand how powerful these wooden plates and carved plates are in the marketplace, but most of you don't. And I'm just thinking, why not? Why aren't you paying attention to the fact that for 20 or 30 bucks, you can give away a plate or a plate and a carving and an engraving that looks like it's worth two and three hundred dollars. And why wouldn't you? I can't tell you how many of these I've carved and engraved and gave away in my career. I use it for just damn near every scouting event that I ever went to was something got gave, given away. And if you'll do that and pick that up and try and figure out what can I do with that in my own life and how can I pull it into what I'm trying to do, you should be able to start with things that are a little simpler and then graduate in the direction that is most appealing to you. The whole goal now, guys, is to discover, develop, master, and share, learn to share your talent. That's why we sit down every week. And we both appreciate every contribution that each of you make. We feel like we're really on to something. We're getting into a point now where we have something really significant to share with the world before we all check out. So here goes another 30 years, gang. <laughs> Is that fair enough? Okay. Back to normal. Here we are. Let me show you Lance's gun first of all. Guys, can you see this cool thing? Look how beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And he's got them all on there. What a fun thing, Lance. Ah, man alive. And then, here's a little name and reputation builder, huh? <laughs> if you've never entered a state fair and competed, now's a good time to do that. Okay, it's a great way to get started. Okay, ask Jose if he knows how to do a plate. Yeah, ask Jose if he knows how to do a plate. Okay, look at that. That's his whole article in Wood Carving Illustrated this month. So if you haven't gotten it, Alan, who publishes Fox, will love to have you buy the plate. This is, this, is the cover. this is the issue. Okay. And then can you see the, the sentiment that he had autographed it for Tam? Right there. For Tammy, thank you for your help and, and encouragement. And this is how to do that little thing. How he actually pulled it off. Now, this is one, two, three, four, five pages of full color exposure, okay, that build Jose's name and reputation. And I don't mind telling you that a page, the average page in the national magazine, I haven't looked at Alan's numbers for a while, but it's generally about $80,000 a page. If you want to buy a full page ad in Wood Carving Illustrated, 
You got any idea what that would cost you? And how much this is worth to Jose to go after it? How many times have you heard me in the last seven years say, listen, gang, the story of the want world is exposure, exposure, exposure. There's just nothing more important. Nothing important than what we do. And Mel and uh, Joni and Nick, thank you for all you've contributed for so many years and how much you're a part of what we're really trying to do here. And I appreciate your efforts continuously. Thank you. Okay. Take over for a minute, Mel, and say hello to everybody, will you? Oh, thank you, and hello, everybody. Um, I just pulled the binder off my shelf above my head here, and guess what I found? Well, it's I transferred it over to a clear acetate, but it's the uh, pattern for Surge 1. <laughs> Is that really? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yes. You did start at I've the beginning, you old dog, didn't you? Had it for 21 years. Yep, there it is, right See there. See it? <laughs> Isn't that fun? <laughs> I knew you'd have it. Well, I knew you would. Well, That's so great, Mel. <laughs> well, I've taken all of the uh, patterns and transferred them to a uh, 3M product. The B2500 uh, clear acetate. It's B2500 clear acetate, and with this, nope, we're stuck. You can burn um, your mirror images. No, yeah, just by flipping the acetate it. over. So you can go to any car show or whatever and set up with your computer, your printer, burn your uh, designs right there, left and right, and do them. That's cool. That's such a fun way to do it. I'm sorry we no. can't. She doesn't understand sign language. No, I'm cussing her. I'm doing everything I can think. Is she still on her mics on? <laughs> yes, it is. No. Turn it off up on the screen, up on the top. Mel, how did you get that on there? Just Mel, can with you my me? copy machine. Yeah, with my copy machine. I've got a brother okay. uh, laser copier. It's overhead That's transparency it. film. Yeah. You just run it through your copier, okay. just like paper. And it burns mm. right to it. And then it makes okay, a mirror. Thanks. And you've got the, and, and you can make your uh, your positive and your well your right hand and left hand images, so you can put them on uh, each side of the car, and they're going the right direction. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. A that little how-to tip. A little how-to tip from the guy <laughs> what learned it all, right? <laughs> We were talking in the groom room before the show started today about uh, learning a lot the hard way. <laughs> and uh, most of us have had a fair amount of experience with that as well. What are you up to, Ron, tonight? Get that mic on, Mom. Lost Ron. You. There you go. Nope, that's Mel. I'm out of here, guys. Okay, Mel. Thank you, bud. Lance has got a comment. you got to get your mic on, Ron. We can't hear your microphone. Okay, is it on now? Nope, it is now. Yeah, go for it, and then we'll go to Lance. Okay. Um, two comments. Um, one was, I think some of the best training I had was being a commissioned salesperson because at the end of the year, you got a W-4 that told you how much money you earned at the end of the year. But everybody in sales on commission, January 1st, starts out at zero. And you have to start all over again every year. 
So it's not like you started and you got there and it continues on. You start all over again at zero. And that's one way you, maybe you could look at what you're doing. Come January 1st, throw everything aside that you made last year and say, okay, I'm starting at zero. Um, the other thing was you were talking about the masters and, and climbing the mountain and, and uh, success mountain and getting to the top. A friend I have down here in Florida, he's following what I'm doing, and he's he's a good buddy. And he's when I told him that I that you included me in that master's circle, he said, "Well, Ron, does that mean that you reached that top of that mountain that you're always talking about?" <laughs> I says, "Mark, no. I think it just got me to the base camp." <laughs> yeah, that really is. That's all we can do is help you get a good beginning. And those are my two thoughts for the night. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Ron. Okay, Larson, you're up, dude. Get that mic on. Still can't hear you. No mic, Lance. There How you about go. now? You got there something? There you go. Yeah, bingo. Okay. Oh, you were uh, you were telling about uh, talking about. Well, maybe I can't remember which one you were pointing at. Maybe this isn't one to start with. It kind of reminded me of the first one I carved, and I brought it when uh, we had the uh, launching of Jose's um, studio. And I brought this first little carving. And the first thing he said, he looked at it and said, "You picked the hardest thing in the world to try and carve something looking straight at you." <laughs> <laughs> and I had no idea, and when you said that, I went, God, that makes total sense. That would be a tough thing to do. Yeah. Very first uh, first thing, but this week is the state fairs uh, for Arizona putting for entries on Friday, so I was going to see if anybody, see if we can see this. I'm going to try and get this. Get some light if, on it if you can. See if it works here. Get some there, side light to there, it. That's it. There you go. Okay. Well, what this is is just basically hold it. Hold it really still. Okay, how? See if there I can get it over. Go. Can yeah. You see? Yeah. See it? Uh, pheasants. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's just a dog with pheasants, but uh, now it's a lot easier for me after a lot of practice to get something looking f straight at me and get the feel. It's definitely not something to start with. Good. But I sure started the hard way. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I think we all do that too. I really yeah. do. We all bite off more than we can chew at times, and and uh, I, if you can just realize it's a learning curve, it's mm -hmm. okay. Just keep going and don't quit because of it. That's the whole thing. Well, the tough stuff makes you better, so you got to try the tough stuff. At some point, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. As long as you don't get <laughs> knocked down, so you don't want to try it anymore. Just keep mistakes get you better. Yeah. Absolutely. Well. I really am proud of how much you're putting into it. I know you're just enjoying it no end, but uh, we, your contribution has got to be inspiring other people, Lance, so just keep doing it, bud. You're making a lot of progress. Okay? Thank you. Appreciate Mike, it. Mike, you still got your microphone on? Yes, I did, lock, Dr. Lou. Uh, I want to say I'm really proud of Lance. Um, I'm hoping he does well in his effect on the fair this year. Um, I won first place last year and this year in the California State Fair. <laughs> last, last night um, we actually went to um, PBS what they call a gallia. I don't know what that means, but I did not win in the PBS gallia. But uh, my project that I donated to them will be donated and sold at auction on this Sunday. Okay. Well, we'll look for the news, Mike. <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to do any good. You know, I am the only wood carver to ever donate to PBS. So, you know, people don't understand what wood carvings mean. 
No, I don't. And and yeah, I understand that. Therefore, I did not win anything in the Gallia. But um, you know, I am happy to have donated my piece to PBS. You got to try. You can't let subjective decisions affect your future. You have to try, and then just keep trying. It really doesn't. It's a great, great thing. Mike, I don't remember anyone that's donated to PBS before that way. So that's a great effort. We'll look forward to the news, okay? Good, bad, or indifferent. We'll hang in there with you, all right? Thank you very much. You just tell them. If they <laughs> or ignore you or overlook you, just go in and swear at somebody and say, oh, damn it, Doc Jensen's going to come after your butt. <laughs> <laughs> all right? Thank you very much. I did meet him artist there that does abstract art and I am on his circles right now and that man I don't understand exactly abstract art but uh, you know it's, some of it's really neat but he's got like 2200 people on his circles well he's growing a name and reputation around anything and I think he can do it around anything literally so yeah. at those kind of associations, I don't think hurt. I really don't. I think they're strong moves. So keep going, okay? Thank you very much. You betcha. Mel, you had something else? I saw you wave your hand. I don't know if Mel got in on anything more or not. Hey, Valencia, there you are, dude. Hi, how are you? Good. Good to see you. All right, all right. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, perfect. Good, good right. backdrop, everything. Excellent. All right. Now, I just wanted to uh, comment also on that, um, the woodworking uh, or, yeah, the woodworking uh, illustrated article. Uh, that was done with the uh, slow speed, about 13,000 RPMs with the uh, one eighth inch um, shank for the uh, burst. They did not want me to do it with the high-speed drill because according to the uh, editors at that uh, publication, uh, not too many of the wood carvers use the high-speed. So they wanted me to use the uh, slow speed, which is uh, very similar to the Dremel. All right. Now, you've been doing it a while, so do you prefer cutting at slow speed or would you rather cut at high speed if you just have your choice? Well, if I had my choice, I would rather do it with the high speed. Yeah. <laughs> so, so between us and and the marketplace, we really do prefer high speed, except they don't think that's the right way to go. And right, they're still kind of behind on their times. Yeah, they're behind. We've been wrestling with that for 30 straight years. So, but yeah. I appreciate the fact that you got the exposure, Jose. That's a good piece. It was well done and well written and good photographs and. One more notch Thank in you. your, one more notch in your gun, buddy. All right. Thank you very much, and you guys have a great night. Thank you much, Jose. Appreciate your coming and being a part of it. No Dean, problem. Got any comments, my friend? Yeah, I just have to. Uh, I got a bit of a chuckle over Lance's comments there about uh, carving an animal face on or head on. Yeah. It reminded me of a longhorn sheep I did once, and he was, he looked like he was face on. When he was all done, he looked like he'd been hit in the face with a frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's scary, scary to admit that, Dean, but that's the truth for yeah, all of us. <coughs> yeah, straight uh, on. I just, is just, I, just life. To, I just have to get into the, uh, in the more consistently into the, uh, the hour, two hours, whatever a day. And, uh, yeah, practice. it's harder than hell to find the time. It but really it's is. Like else I think it's uh, you give it to put into it. Yeah. It, so. It'll respond. It really will. Cheryl, got any words of wisdom for everybody tonight, babe? Words of wisdom? No. No. <laughs> um I'm just looking no. <laughs> I'm just looking forward to October 9th when um I'll be oh, that's being right. with you guys. You'll be here. Well, it's harvest yes. time, so it's a damn good time to come, lady. It is going to be beautiful here by August, October 9th, I guarantee you. I can't wait. Can't wait. We'll look forward to getting you here. 
Me too. <laughs> me, Thanks, Tammy. <laughs> me too, me three, yeah. The only problem, Cheryl, is when do you come and, and take time with Tammy? Uh, mm -hmm. I have to come and remind you to keep working because it's just so damn much fun. All she kind of wants to do is play all the time. So we'll keep you guys <laughs> on task, okay? This is work. It's work. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I think we've got her done. Tam, do you want to say something before we sign off, lady? Yes, I do. Um, Ron called me Monday morning after the last webinar and gave me a phone hug, and I just wanted to let him know how sweet I thought that was. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I, I look forward to hearing from all of you. When you call, it's, it's a special treat. And good night, and thank you. All right, Greg, we got her going. Uh, I'm watching our numbers really carefully, and you guys just cannot even realize what has already begun to happen. And and if you just continue to have faith in yourself and your participation, I know that coming tomorrow night with the blogging session is a little more of a struggle, but dang it, don't miss this opportunity. Let's get you up and running and pull this whole thing together. And we'll get the book launched and we'll get everything worked out as quickly as we can. But now's the time. I know the first book costs a little bit. I'm going to have you get in a wholesale position with the INE network and stuff as soon as we can. But try not to ignore the fact that you can't sell something you don't know anything about. You really got to spend some serious time with those seven videotapes and begin to get a sense of what's there and Lou, how it may work. Okay. Um, I have been asked, uh, "When do you think you'll have them? When can we get them out?" I just told them earlier that I'm going over to BYU tomorrow, and Kent just gave me a heads up on my uh, texting today that. They've just about got them ready to print, so I think next week we'll have them ready to go out. And uh, what they'll go out is a set. For the 140 bucks you get, the seven books and the seven DVDs in the books, so you get a live hard copy of everything. Now, as we move on into being able to have those DVDs that also work on a smartphone, do you see the ammunition we're going to have? This is I put fifty grand into this project, guys, and so we gotta get it ready to roll. And instead of you having to put that much money up front to try and get something that we can then sell as a concept, I think we've got something really deadly. The idea of a hobby is usually appealing to people if they can get past being so damn busy in their life that they can't do anything else. And there's almost no other way to retire retire anymore. You can start a hobby business and do it well enough so Uncle Sam will let you write everything off. You play and you're writing it off and almost what amount of money you make allows you then to have a business tax deductible excuse to go play. And there's 80 flipping million boomers trying to find what we've got. That's a lot of potential. So go to bed tonight. Go in on your bathroom mirror and write 80 million on your bathroom mirror with a sharpie or a, a marker. Okay, that's the target. And I guarantee you that's going to change your life as well as the lives of the people that you help draw into this idea. So we're messing around with quite a concept and I appreciate your patience with all the coughing and with all of the everything that doesn't work out. Uh, the shows are getting better. And we all are learning a little more every week. So thank you for your sharing. Thank you for your contribution. Uh, let's go get that next 30 years, okay? Good night, everybody. Thank you, Mel. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Good night. Jose. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Tamari. See you next tomorrow night. See you tomorrow night. Hasta la vista. Good idea. Good night.